so I want to bring in Eric Hippo. He, of course, is a venture capitalist who has watched many uh, companies spark from American ingenuity. You've been listening to this, and I believe we're getting uh, Charlie Gasparino in the chair as well. Tell me what you thought of the speech and, and the 50 states that, of course, he has represented there with 50 different Made in the USA products. Uh, well, I, 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 as you say, I think that anything that uh, averts a trade war, and if he's re really seriously trying to fix things, uh, uh, then we will be in good shape. A trade war will benefit nobody. Uh, we will get hurt. The, the whole world is going to get hurt. I don't think you can put that genie back in the bottle. I, th I don't think you can say after 20, 30 years of free trade or quasi-free trade that you're going to go back and protect yourself because all of our products, now, and this is certainly true in technology, are completely intertwined by products that come from all different places in the world, whether it's hardware or chips or, or software. Uh, people have plants in our country. We have plants in their country. Yeah. I don't know how you see this in the black and well, white Well, the modern supply chain, I think what you're saying is that all of these 50 companies, and, and let, me, let me read some of them to you. You have uh, Arkansas's Ranger Boats. Um, you've got Lantern Lighting out of Arizona. Moon pies. <laughs> we all love moon pies. These are made in America. Um, uh, you, you go on and on. Many of them, you could say, are assembled in America, but they'd be hard-pressed to prove that every single piece of material that goes into making that assembled in the USA was made in the USA. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm saying it exactly, exactly. That, that, that you, you just cannot enter, you know, uh, take apart uh, all of this supply chain. And if you do try to disrupt, or if the unintended consequences to disrupt uh, the supply chain, there's going to be a lot of companies that are going to be hurting. Uh, they won't be able to find the product. At any cost, yeah. they won't be able to find the product. Let me segue to Google, because Google is coming out with its earnings after the bell. So folks were about 12 minutes away from hearing that closing bell ring. This is interesting. The president stuck up for Google on Thursday when the European Union said, we're going to slap a five billion dollar fine on you guys and the big complaint was that uh, they claimed Google is abusing its market dominance by bundling its Chrome uh, search engine into Android phones I mean they're doing it for free but that they really feel that this is anti-competitive behavior President Trump then tweeted this I told you so the European Union just slapped a five billion dollar fine on one of our great companies Google they truly have taken advantage in the US but not for long it's kind of interesting to see him do that when in the past he's he's taken on some other companies that are similar to Google when it comes to things like privacy and well there, there is a kernel of truth in all this where first of all as you mentioned uh, the Android operating system is given away for free mm -hmm. so the result of that is that Google has to make money somehow and they make it through search and they make it through Chrome or, or whatever other application but 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 if you think of the incredible benefits that that the, all these little computers that we carry in our pocket uh, because of Android, they, they are half the price of, for the most part, half the price of the iPhone. Mm -hmm. So it benefits many, many more people. There's you know, literally two or three billion people in the, in the world now who has the, have these phones. The benefits of society are enormous. Mm -hmm. And uh, to say, well, because you bundle uh, Search or uh, Chrome, um, you know, you, 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 you have a fine, doesn't yeah. make any sense. Google says it's going to appeal this. They're going to fight it. But yet, there is word that after the bell, when they come out with numbers, they will have, I believe the way they put it was they're going to account for it somehow. That's point. weird. If they're going to fight it, why are they accounting for a fine? I don't know the rules about that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm assuming they have to pay the fine and then appeal. Uh, but, you know, these appeals take for, forever. They take years and years. So I don't think there'll be any impact in the immediate, except for the monetary Or they could part. drop Chrome. They could stop uh, just putting it in there automatically, but I mean, you want that, don't you? If you're a phone owner, you want something like that. Well, of course, it's, it, and it all works together, and I don't think consumers are complaining, quite frankly. I think it's probably some obscure uh, European software maker who's complaining. Well, Google is expecting revenue of $32 billion. They have just grown and grown, and of course, they make a lot of people's lives easier, but there is that question as to whether they shove uh, their searches up at the top, and, and there's been a 60 Minutes piece on that, anti-competitive behavior.
But putting that aside, with a market cap of 360 billion, their, their price to earnings ratio is 51. I'm getting a little wonky here, but that seems a little expensive to buy the stock here, and yet it continues to go up. It's had a great year. Well, their revenues continue to go up maybe 20, 25 percent on a, on a very, very big basis. Look, there are three companies that are um, uh, racing to be the first yeah. trillion dollar company Alphabet, which is Google. Uh, Amazon and Apple, and they're kind of neck and neck, and one of these companies will be a trillion dollar company any day now. You as a venture capitalist, are you hearing from these American ingenuity companies, these entrepreneurs, that they would rather either sell to a bigger name or just remain private? I mean, I'm thinking of Plated. You had a big uh, stake in Plated. It then got bought. Um, and some of these other companies, I mean, why deal with the nightmare of public markets? Well, yes, uh, obviously, the venture back companies mm -hmm. uh, you know, eventually want to have some liquidity event. Okay. Um, this, the, the IPO market has been pretty good uh, recently, including for uh, tech companies that are valued at $1 to $3 billion. Uh, there's a lot of companies that way. I think there will be lots of benefits to going public. Quick uh, comment on Amazon. The president, once again today, is attacking Amazon, saying that they, they uh, propose an unfair deal with the, the U.S. Postal Service, although by law, the U.S. Postal Service can't strike a deal where they lose money. So we're not really sure how the president's going to focus on that, but uh, he does not like Jeff Bezos. Well, that's, it's personal and it's political, yeah. but, but and to me, it looks like Amazon is kind of helping to save the U.S. <laughs> Postal Service. And they, they, by the way, and Charlie said this earlier, they make things less expensive for the consumer. Prices come down. So I don't know how you, you fight an antitrust uh, battle on that one. It's great to see you, Eric. Great Thank to you. See you as well. Eric Hippo, who has uh, been a longtime tech investor and venture capitalist. Closing bell ringing.